Um, I started painting when I was in grammar school. I took private lessons with an older woman artist in my neighborhood after school. And I started that in about the fifth grade and went all through high school with her. And we started with temper paint, doing exercises that everyone did and moved on to oils and then pastels. Well, I went to USM for a year, majored in English. Didn't really like that and decided to um, put in an application for Portland School of Art, which is now Maine College of Art and Design. Showed my portfolio and was accepted, so I started four years um, on a bachelor's fine arts degree at Portland School of Art and majored in painting. I was married right before college and we're still married today. And when I graduated from college, I was pregnant with our first daughter. So I didn't really develop my art career as an independent. I wasn't a type of person that would kind of dabble in art or try to do it, you know, after the baby was in bed or anything like that. I was all in or all out. So I didn't paint for 22 years after I graduated from art school. I found a career as a banker. And when my younger daughter went off to college, I had another daughter and my younger daughter went off to college. I left the bank to paint full time. And that was in 2000. I was on six different boards in the community, you know, worked long hours, uh, two kids, house, husband, you know, no, there just wasn't time to, and I didn't want to dabble. I wanted to be serious about it. So I just waited and then I started from scratch pretty much took me back to where I was at art school, right right back there. And um, took me a long time with my first painting, set up a studio at home. Um, each small painting took me about a month to complete. They were six by 12, my first three paintings, and then just took off from there. Um, now I do about five, six by 12s in one day. So my advice to new artists that are starting out would be just paint. <laughs> It just gets better with experience. I think because I didn't paint for 22 years, I approached it at age 45 with a passion that I might not have had just graduating from art school because I hadn't been able to do it all that time. Being an artist is a small business above anything else. Um, we like to focus on the art part, but you also have to make money to be able to do your art. So I learned about tax returns, about profit and loss statements and balance sheets and, and how to be a small business when I was a banker. I wouldn't have had that knowledge just coming out of art school. Now art schools do a little bit more about the business side and I've helped teaching some of those classes at Mecca, but at that time it really wasn't, wasn't taught in art school. At first when I painted again, I went back to doing cityscapes from my photographs that I had taken but I was doing them in the studio. It took me about four years to work up a comfort level to go out and paint outside when I met some other artists that did it and learned more about gear and how to paint outside to best advantage. So then from that point on, I was like I was bitten by a bug and I just started painting outside almost all the time. I really found that I love to travel and paint, explore and find new places. I'm a lifelong Mainer and I had never been to Baxter Park and I was invited by a gallerist to the area and started exploring, staying up there a lot and for 15 years was painting Katahdin, Baxter State Park, Katahdin Lake. And I started um, painting in Acadia and then also painting in the Scudic section of Acadia and spending most of my time up there now um, finding that sort of a hidden gem, a little bit of a secret. Everything that Acadia has, but smaller and quieter and no crowds. So I love to just park by the ocean up there and just paint all day. Um, also in way down east, in Eastport and Lubeck. And also my travels have led me to New Brunswick. I joined a group of painters that paint outside, the plein air painters of the Bay of Fundy and I've spent several years um, painting in New Brunswick, had a show at the St. John Art Center, and that just really developed because of my love of, of painting outdoors. I paint in acrylic and pastel. Pastels, I started uh, with my private art lessons and pretty much continue that way. They weren't taught in art school when I was in art school, but I continued them on my own. 
I had learned to paint in pastel on a sanded paper, a specialty paper from Germany, and I still paint on a sanded surface. Pastels are sort of an addiction. They're like candy. You can't mix the colors as well. You can mix them on the paper, so you have to have lots of pastels, so that leads one to have a huge collection and always be buying pastels. Uh, so I, I learned how to carry them in boxes, special pastel boxes, and go on the road with an easel and, and paint. They can't paint in the rain, that's the only thing. They can't get wet. But pastel is the most archival material of paint because it's just pigment with a little bit of binder in a stick form. I use soft pastels rather than oil pastels. It's a different type of medium. And I like pastels because it's the way I use them, it's like painting and drawing in the same piece. I use a, a liquid fixative and a paintbrush and I lay down some pastel on the paper or the board and um, then I'll, I'll use a wash on it to get some different effects. You really don't know what's going to happen and then just keep layering on pastel, layering on pastel, washing it and then laying on a top layer. All my work starts with a, a base coat or like a primer, you could call it, of medium magenta color. <laughs> I use that on my acrylics. I use golden medium magenta. And then I use a magenta pastel on the pastel first. I rub the whole surface with the magenta pastel and then use a fixative on it with the brush. And that um, makes it a sturdy painting surface. And then I just start basically drawing with the pastel. In acrylic, I make the initial drawing with um, a brush and one color and then just go from there. Just lots of layering, lots of removing, lots of layering. And I also can use pastels in the winter, which I can't do with acrylics because it's just too cold. They're a water-based medium. But I've painted at Gilson Farm in Falmouth in 18 degrees and Kettle Cove at about the same temperatures. So that's what pastels are good for. <laughs> Um, I often find really cold winter painting, uh, I'm dressed too warmly because you really dress for the weather, you know, heavy boots, I have a pair of Patagonia overalls and down jacket and two pairs of gloves, liners, um, and then fingerless gloves, and often too warm. It's in the, sh the shoulder seasons where usually freezing or too warm because you don't really know how to dress for that kind of weather. Plein air painting is very challenging, lugging the gear around, the heat, the cold, wind, rain, unpredictable weather here in Maine, which is perfect and we love that, but not so good for painting. Lots of bugs, lots of people stopping by when you paint by the side of the road. So I've done a lot of teaching of painting along the way, so I'm pretty comfortable talking to people while I'm painting. Uh, some artists are not real comfortable with that, but I, it doesn't really bother me, so I just keep right on painting. Um, and I've met actually lots of really nice people that way and some who have become collectors of my work. So that's, it's kind of interesting. I've done um, 20 feet of paintings for, as a commission for Mercy Hospital for their uh, Four River campus for their main lobby. So those were three paintings and the total was 20 feet in width, three feet tall. A um, little too large to paint out on location. And I've done a large other commission for Maine Medical Center too for the new wing um, that was a large work on paper with acrylic, um, about seven feet width, um, a landscape format size painting that just too large to paint outside. But I would say my largest works that I do outside are 18 by 36 or 30 by 30. So either really, really small, or really, really big. When I was first started out, so this would be in the late 60s, early 70s, using pastel, the only thing that was available was um, from Germany, very fine, it was this color of sandpaper, beige, it was called snuffing paper. Not exactly sure what it was used for, probably some industrial use, but it came in sheets and we would use that to paint on. Where pastel is a chalk, um, it adheres to the sanded paper and you can also rub it and, and uh, do other techniques with it and it stays on the paper. Sometimes pastel paintings will dust a little bit from movement over time and that really doesn't hurt them. Um, they're very permanent, you just don't hang them in sun and you don't want them to get wet. 
and they can be, the mats can be cleaned up. They're always matted and under glass or just under glass to protect the surface because it's chalk, so it always remains um, workable. You could, you could go back to a pastel and rework the original colors at any time, really. I also use sanded boards that are made specifically for artists. They're archival, um, like a masonite type of panel, and they, uh, the company Ampersand puts a sanded coating on the panel, so it has a, t a tooth to it. You can use a liquid on them, so you can use a brush and the, the liquid fixative and smoosh that all around. And on certain of the pastel papers that are sanded, you can do that as well. As I discover places around Maine, for example, the Scarborough Marsh is one of my favorite places. I've done, I think, almost 100 paintings of the Scarborough Marsh, just from one or two locations, like standing in one or two locations on the Scarborough Marsh. I find it endlessly fascinating. And my love of those places, I hope, comes through in my paintings. So as I'm exploring and discovering a place, I hope that the person who's looking at the painting, should it become a successful painting, feel that same thing that I was seeing and that I was feeling at the time. And how I feel when I paint is more about the place, the location. It's not really an emotional attachment to painting as some artists have, which is fine. For me, it's about the place and the emotion of the place and seeing the place. So I do hope that that love of place is conveyed in my paintings. When you paint the landscape or the cityscape, your work documents uh, the environment. A lot of places that I have been painting, I can actually see the change in climate because I paint at the same time of year in the same place. So I paint in a series quite often. Uh, so I think that the documentation of what I'm seeing, of what's happening in the world around me, is a really interesting um, part of my painting work. When I'm choosing an outdoor painting location, most often in the last 10 years, I travel and stay at an inn or at a place with other artists and I work constantly. So I go by myself and discover places, go to Canada, just set out in the car, explore places, find a place that looks interesting to me, and I paint. Sometimes I'll hike in with gear, um, say in Baxter, to a nice place to paint, but mostly I try to stay at the side of the road and paint from the car. And other times when I'm not on the road, depending on the weather, I'll wake up and if I don't have any commissions or any work that I have to do in the studio, I'll just have an itching to go to a place that I haven't been in a while and pack up the car and go. Well, I have favorite places that I like to paint that I've painted at before that I paint in series that I feel like I haven't really finished with them. Uh, I also spend a lot of time doing photographs, so part of the explore exploration of places and feeling them out is just spending time taking photographs. So a lot, of, a lot of my time I will just do that, explore a place, take photographs, and then go back to something that when I look at the pictures I can see, well this is really something. Even though many artists have painted at the same place, hundreds, maybe thousands, it still um, can be presented in a new way, the way that I see it. The work that's represented here at the Yarmouth History Center in the Stonewall Gallery represents all of our Maine, from Scarborough Marsh to Pemaquid to the Acadia Bass Harbor area, Reed State Park, uh, and Katahdin. Uh, different explorations. This work uh, is over a long period of time that I was painting in pastels. I think it's unusual to see a show of just pastels of one artist, it's not that common. So it's a broad range of work. You might see a little stylistic difference over the 22 years of painting in pastel. I think that's kind of interesting to see some changes in the work. I almost always include water in my work. I am drawn to paint by the water. I don't think there are any works that I have that are not paintings of water. Uh, the larger piece um, that's 24 by 24 of Whetstone Bridge is in the new uh, National Monument land near Baxter State Park called Katahdin Woods and Water. And there's uh, a wilderness bridge that goes over a dirt tote road as part of that area. 
And this is right, this painting is right by that bridge. And I painted it on October 1st. And if we know anything about Northern Maine, October is much colder <laughs> in Northern Maine. And it was about 30 degrees maybe when I'm out painting this and I'm in the shade by the side of the water. Um, and fall color is just really beginning to just be crazy and wild up there. And a lot of artists don't like to paint the really wild fall color, but I just love color and I love painting everything about color. And I was really drawn to the cool, really cold water blues in the rocks. And it's an area of rapids. And I just found that to be really compelling. I was painting with a few other artists um, that I frequently painted with up there. And we just had a, had a beautiful day. Probably took a little bit longer to make that painting because it was so cold. <laughs> Um, probably about three hours painting on a larger pastel painting like that. Um, I've also painted that same location in acrylic. Uh, was just as thrilled painting it both times at the same time of year too. I was part of a group of artists that painted from the Lunxu's cabins before the area was part of Katahdin Woods and Waters, which was the National Monument. About a dozen artists went up there and stayed for a week and painted at Lunxu's camps, which many Mainers will know that location because if you've read Lost in the Mountain in Maine that you read in grammar school, Don Fendler was found right across from those camps uh, across the Penobscot River and was rescued and brought to safety and lived a very long life as a as a Mainer who instilled the love of the Maine woods in, in many Maine children. And this location was right there. And actually I painted from the scenic lookout, probably one of the first painters to paint up there, um, that has a fantastic view of Katahdin that most people don't see. It's from the other side of the Golden Road where you see the back side of Katahdin and was just a wonderful experience uh, to be one of the first artists to paint up there since Thoreau was there and you know, a group of other artists were there when it was true wilderness. <laughs> I've painted at the Yarmouth Town Landing. Uh, a group of us used to do a regular plein air painting group. Plein air means painting in open air and, and it comes from the French. And we would paint often at the, I'm not sure which town landing it is, but it's the one where the restaurant is across the water and boat launch and I really love that location to paint there. I really appreciate working with the Yarmouth History Center. My husband is a photographer and he had an exhibit here last year and it was such a wonderful experience and we met Katie and other people on the staff and she asked me to come this year and have an exhibit of my own and I really love the location and this will definitely become a future painting location for me. I love the location on the river. Um, and just a wonderful staff and group of people that work here. As far as social media goes, I have a website, karenmariemichelle.com, and that's Karen with a C. And I also show a lot of my progress paintings on Instagram, which is cmmichelleart. A lot of process uh, photos of my work, some drawings, paintings, and just types of photographs that I shoot uh, that later will become paintings and a little bit about our cute little bungalow that we live in and have been restoring for many, many years in Westbrook, Maine. <laughs> the Yarmouth History Center is located at 118 East Elm Street in Yarmouth, Maine. We are open 10 to 4, Tuesday through Friday, and it is free of charge to all visitors.